Hello friends and welcome to edupediawall.com. In today's video we are gonna learn how to say to know, to ask and to pronounce you in Spanish. So, saber versus conocer, pedir versus preguntar and to versus usted. So, let's start with saber and conocer. There, they are two verbs to express the idea to know, okay? Both saber and conocer means to know. And you use saber or conocer depending on the context. And they are not interchangeable, okay? Saber doesn't really mean conocer. And conocer doesn't mean saber, even though the translation is to know. Let's learn the difference, okay? So, saber is to know a fact, to know something thoroughly, to know how to do something. Okay, that's the meaning of saber. And let's see how to conjugate it in the present. It is almost regular, it just changes in the first person of the singular, so let's go for it. Repeat after me. Yo sé, tú sabes, él, ella sabe, nosotros, nosotras, sabemos, vosotros, vosotras, sabéis, ellos, ellas, saben. So, as you can see, as you can see, uh, the only person that changes, and there is not regular per se, is the first person of the singular. The rest of them are regular conjugation. So, let's see examples of saber. And, they, and, they, and it's used. So, saber is used to express knowledge or ignorance of a fact or information about something. That's one of the uses of saber. So, some examples. Marcos sabe dónde está Isabel. Marcos knows what Isabel is. So, here we use the verb saber. Marcos sabe dónde está Isabel. No sé de lo que me hablas. I don't know what you're talking about. Or what you talk about. No sé de lo que me hablas. Okay, this is a complex sentence. Yes, we'll learn it in the intermediate level. Don't worry about it. Okay, so saber is also used to express knowledge or ignorance of a subject or learning discipline. Also depending upon the context sometimes, but we mostly use saber. Let's, let's see some examples of this. Nosotras sabemos inglés. We know English. Nosotras sabemos inglés. We know the, the subject, right? And ellos no saben matemáticas. There's a small mistake. We just have to take the S out of the no. Ellos no saben matemáticas. They don't know mathematics. And also saber is used to express knowledge or ignorance of a skill or how to do something. And for that we use saber plus infinitive, right? When talking about a skill or how to do something, we use saber plus the infinitive of a verb. For example. No sé conducir. I don't know how to drive. No sé conducir. I don't know how to drive. Okay, so saber plus infinitive, conducir to drive, no sé conducir. Ella nada muy bien, for example, that's another way to say this kind of use, okay? Ella nada muy bien, she knows how to swim very well. Or, ella sabe nadar muy bien. Okay? Ella sabe nadar muy bien. Also, saber is used to, to say that you know something by heart. Okay? Saber means to know something by heart also. So, for example, 
Luis sabe los verbos irregulares. Luis knows the regular verbs by heart. Right? Luis sabe los verbos irregulares. No sabe la letra de mi canción. He or she doesn't know the words of that song of my song. No sabe la letra de mi canción. And those were the rules and the ways of using saber. So now let's take a look at conocer, which is simple. Okay, it's way sim more simple than, con than saber. Conocer means to be acquainted with a person, a place of a thing. And uh, as saber, the conjugation only is irregular for the first person of the singular. So let's see how to conjugate this verb in present. Uh, repeat after me, okay? Yo conozco, tú conoces, él, ella conoce, nosotros, nosotras conocemos, vosotros, vosotras conocéis, ellos, ellas conocen. Again, yo conozco, tú conoces, él, ella conoce, nosotros, nosotras conocemos, vosotros, vosotras conocéis, ellos, ellas conocen. And some examples of the use of this verb would be No conozco a Estefanía. I don't know. I'm not acquainted with Stephanie. Okay? No conozco a Estefanía. It would be like I've never met her. Okay? No conozco a Estefanía. Lucas y Sonia conocen Bogotá. Lucas and Sonia know Bogotá. Lucas and Sonia know or they are acquainted with Bogotá. Okay? Would be like they, they've been there. Lucas y Sonia conocen Bogotá would mean that they've been to Bogotá and they know it. Okay? So that was that simple and there were the uses of conocer and saber. So now let's take a look at pedir and preguntar, which both mean to ask, and they are not as well interchangeable, okay? Happens the same as with saber and conocer. And there are a few rules also for them. They are way easier than, than those for saber. So pedir, for example, means to ask for or request an, ob an object, service, or favor, okay? So pedir means... It, it, it's just that, to ask for, request an object, service a favor, to order something, for example. And uh, how do we conjugate it? Let's take a look at it. It is the regular verb, so you just have to learn the present conjugation by heart, okay? So, yo pido, tú pides, él, ella pide. Nosotros, nosotras pedimos, vosotros, vosotras pedís, ellos, ellas piden. Again, yo pido, tú pides, él, ella pide, nosotros, nosotras pedimos, vosotros, vosotras pedís, ellos, ellas pedimos. Piden. So there was a conjugation, and now let's see some examples of the use of pedir, meaning to ask for something or request something. For example, this question: Pedimos algo más? Would mean should we ask or should we order something else? Pedimos algo más? Right? For example, you're in a cafeteria, or bar, or restaurant, and you just say: Pedimos algo más? For example, pido un bolígrafo. I ask for a pen. Pido un bolígrafo. I ask for a pen. So, pedir meaning to ask for, request an object or a subject. Okay, a service. And preguntar. Preguntar, which is a regular verb. Yo pregunto, tú preguntas, él, ella pregunta, nosotros, nosotras preguntamos. Vosotros, vosotras preguntáis, ellos, 
ellas preguntan. Es un regular verb. We know already this, right? And preguntar means to ask a question or request information. That's easy one. That's preguntar to ask a question or request information. And then we're going to see a few examples, a couple of examples of how to use it. As you can imagine, it's not that difficult. For example, preguntamos qué hora es. We ask what time is it. It is. Preguntamos qué hora es. We ask what time it is. Or for example, pregunto la dirección. I ask the direction. Okay? Pregunto la dirección. I ask the direction, for example, on the street. I don't know how to get some, to somewhere, right? So, pregunto la dirección. I ask the direction. This to pedir and preguntar are easy one. You could even say that pedir means to order something or to ask for something, right? While preguntar means to ask something. And finally, we get to the differences between tú and usted. Maybe you have heard it already a lot. So, so Spanish speakers use tú and usted, which both mean you, to convey the formality of a relationship, okay? Also, for example, some, ex some countries in Latin America use commonly usted to talk to everybody. Well, in Spain, for example, we just use it in the, for, for the cases we, we are going to see now, okay? So, tú is less formal than usted, but when do we use tú and when do we use usted? Well, we use tú and vosotros, vosotras, when talking to someone of the same age, the same rank, or the same educational level, and expressing a certain level of, inti of intimacy with someone. And most adults address children using tú, okay? Tú, you singular, vosotros, vosotras, you plural, masculine, female, okay? For example, in Spain, we, we normally use this. This is really often, we, we use it a lot. It is often to talk people of two, okay? And we use usted or ustedes, plural, when. Talking to an old person or an older person, someone you don't know or someone you consider to be of higher rank. And this usted is a more respectful way of talking to someone. And for example, in Latin America, it's really, really common to hear usted, ustedes, as, um, as we say, it, uh, as if we were using tú, okay? So, be aware that at some point in a relationship between people who speak Spanish, a shift occurs from the formal usted to the more informal and intimate tú. At this point, we use the word, the word tú when addressing each other. And in Spanish, we call this tutearse, that is, to talk to. And just keep in mind that if you don't want to have a closer, more intimate relationship with someone, or if you want to keep the relationship more professional and distant, you should decide to call that person usted, okay? Uh, these are the basic rules to use to understand. Some people just use usted for everybody, okay? Uh, don't Just don't use do for everybody, just like stick to these rules if you prefer it, okay? Older people and uh, and people you older than you, people, other people you don't know, okay? Should be addressed with, by, usted. And we use usted, ustedes with the third person, singular, plural, depending, of a conjugated verb, okay? We, we already know how to use to, so let's see how to use usted, okay? For example, here, if you know the person, you could say, tú compras un teléfono móvil. You buy a mobile telephone or a mobile phone, a cell phone. 
if you don't know the person, you say, usted compra un teléfono móvil. Yes, see how tú is conjugated with the second person of the singular, you, while usted compra is conjugated with the third person of the singular. Okay? Tú compras, usted compra. Now let's move on to another example. Vosotros veis la televisión. You watch TV. You guys watch TV. Ustedes ven la televisión. Same. Vosotros is conjugated with the second person of the plural, while ustedes is conjugated with the third person of the plural. And finally, Vosotras leéis un libro muy interesante. You girls read a very interesting book. Ustedes leen un libro muy interesante. That's a formal way to say you read a very interesting uh, book. So, this was the use of to instead. And well, this was everything for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned a lot and I clarified some of your doubts. So in the next few videos we're gonna we're gonna learn how to conjugate regular verbs in different tenses. Okay, we already know the present. We'll do a small review in the next video and then we'll go for the past and the future, okay? So I hope you enjoyed the video and once again thanks for watching and hasta la próxima see you later